SpaceX's Starship is now fully stacked. Ship 25 and Booster 7 are sitting at the launch pad, twiddling their imaginary thumbs, waiting for the FAA to decide their fate. This waiting game with an indeterminate timeline appears set to continue for a significant duration. So in order to break the monotony, Booster 9 decided to wave all four grid fins for a few moments. It could be that it felt excited seeing its little brother, the Tesla Cybertruck, arriving on the site. Indeed, the Cybertruck with its futuristic design and association with SpaceX and Tesla has garnered attention worldwide. Its presence near the launch pad was a testament to the groundbreaking innovations taking place within these pioneering companies. But back to the grid fins wiggling, in fact, this should be a small test, but very important for the next Starship flight. Fixed in place and assembled out of welded steel, unlike the Falcon family's deployable cast titanium fins, these grid fins are important parts of rockets. They're not meant to fold and are extremely heavy. Made of steel and at around 16 feet tall and 8 feet wide, it helps to prove how larger than life these grid fins really are. Speaking in terms of function, reusable rockets like the Falcon 9 and Starship cannot solely rely on the RCS or reaction control system to adjust the orientation and stabilize the vehicle during all phases of descent, where both airspeed and air density vary rapidly and sometimes dangerously. Moreover, having RCS as the sole attitude control system would mean that the rocket will have to carry more of the working fluid, thus leading to a heavier booster. Therefore, an aerodynamic control surface requiring less hinge moment, and that is effective at a wide range of Mach numbers, between hypersonic to subsonic, is of great importance to such aerospace vehicles. That being said, grid fins have by far been the best to satisfy the aforementioned requirements. They're also known by the names of lattice wings and lattice controls, and are compact, unconventional aerodynamic control surfaces, made up of multiple individual constituents held rigidly together by a common framework. Each piece is a conventionally high aspect ratio rectangular wing of constant cord. Some of the major advantages they have to offer are high aerodynamic effectiveness at low weight and volume, well adjustable aerodynamic characteristics for wide ranges of Mach numbers and deflection angles, enhanced yaw stability at high incidence angles and improved roll stability, small hinge moments with the minimal shift of the center of pressure, implying that less torque and lighter machinery are required to actuate them, compact size and possibility to be folded down to the fuselage, making the missile more compact and easier to store or transport. And one of the most special functions of the Starship grid fins is that SpaceX wants to not only consistently reuse the booster, but also safely and precisely catch it through use of Mechazilla. However, there is one major drawback. The very multi-plane construction of the grid fins give rise to a relatively high level of wave drag and weak stability slash effectiveness at transonic speeds due to interference of mock cones of individual members, resulting in a stronger bow shock upstream. SpaceX mitigated these effects by increasing the critical Mach number or by simply inducing a sweep in the individual members. This change decreases the intensity of the bow shock wave and improves transonic behavior. Wave drag reduction for a planar grid fin can be accomplished by minimizing the leading edge bluntness of individual members and total surface thickness. The members slash elements can be profiled as wedge, double wedge, or hexagonal airfoils. However, in some cases, these heavily scale up the manufacturing cost, which is why they are not so commonly used. But back to Starbase, there are two strapped down Raptor engine bells spotted at the build site yesterday, R14 and R136. Quite ridiculous, right? In fact, these are only Raptor combustion chambers and nozzles. Normally, these Raptors are clearly incomplete, but if there is a special miracle, could this mean the next Raptor generation? It's hard to know exactly what SpaceX is aiming for here. Meanwhile, in High Bay, Ship 31 was lifted, then hung around for a while before later being stacked onto the aft section. That's six fully stacked starships now at Starbase. Ship 31 adds to the numerous ship prototypes currently in production. As Ship 25 and 26 remain at the launch site, Ships 28, 29, 30, and 31 are in testing or in the later stages of production. Ship 29 and Booster 10 have recently undergone cryogenic proof testing, which appears to have been largely successful. Engine installation is up next for both prototypes. On 
top of Ship 29 testing, Ship 24.2 is also now at Massey's to undertake testing in the near future. Now, putting Starship aside, SpaceX has officially rounded out the third quarter with 70 launches for the year, beating the company's 2022 record of 61. This was the company's fourth straight year of beating its year-to-date record from the previous year. In 2020, when this current streak started, SpaceX was only able to launch 26 times that year. Starlink has played a huge role in getting SpaceX's launch numbers so high. The company began launching Gen 2 mini Starlink satellites to expand, but also replace the now 4-plus-year-old Gen 1 satellites. Out of the 70 launches so far this year, only 27 were non-Starlink missions, including NASA, crewed, crewed, and cargo flights, some commercial satellite flights, and missions for the Department of Defense. Of course, the Falcon 9 has carried the vast majority of those 70 launches. However, 2023 has been a good year for Falcon Heavy flights from SpaceX. Though, practically a Falcon 9 with two extra first stages strapped to its sides as boosters, the Falcon Heavy has laid dormant for several years since its first round of commercial launches back in 2019. That changed when the Space Force launched its first mission on a Falcon Heavy at the end of 2022, and since then we've seen three more launches this year with a fourth, NASA's Psyche spacecraft coming next week. SpaceX's total launches and Falcon Heavy isn't the only record it has this year, or at least it's tying in 2023. For the third year in a row, SpaceX has launched three crewed missions to space. While we expected to see maybe four, sadly, Polaris Dawn has been updated, saying that it won't launch until next year. But three crewed flights to the ISS are still rather impressive, especially given SpaceX's competitor, Boeing, still hasn't performed one yet. When looking at the numbers, 2023 is looking to be another great record-breaking year for SpaceX with no other company coming close to those numbers. However, SpaceX was given a goal from Musk to get to 100 launches this year, which seems to have been harder than we thought it would be. SpaceX's current launch rate is one launch every 3.96 days. That's just slightly behind the needed 3.65 to reach 100 launches. While that doesn't sound like a lot, you're right, it isn't. It still means we'll need a big push from SpaceX to launch faster than they've ever had before. At the time of recording this, to get the final 30 launches in the 90 days left in the year would mean one launch every three days, a rate SpaceX has yet to meet. SpaceX did pick up its rate from the end of the second quarter to now. At the halfway point of this year, SpaceX's launch rate was at 4.05 days, so it'd be hard to imagine such a drastic rate increase, but maybe it's still possible. In light of SpaceX's clear achievements, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency is also working on plans for a new, large, and reusable launch vehicle as the core of its future space transportation plans. The launcher will be designed jointly by JAXA and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. It's supposed to be reusable while also increasing payload capacity and decreasing launch costs. The move is sanctioned by Japan's basic plan on space policy, which was revised on June 13th this year. The plan notes research and development on a next-generation rocket to follow the new H-3 rocket. H-3 is an expendable rocket intended to be a more capable and cost-effective successor to the H-2A rocket. It had its first flight in March, but a second stage issue resulted in the loss of the mission. Both rockets are powered by a liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen propellant mix. The JAXA said it is targeting reducing cost per kilogram to low Earth orbit by about half compared to H-3. It'll also allow an increase in launch frequency frequency. Few details are so far set in stone. And that's all for today's episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.